skills of our very good friend, but I can still say my Madame Gang Umaga. <laughs> and have a very, very beautiful Manila morning. President of the Senate, Mr. Pimentel, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's a great pleasure. Your presence here is a very strong and clear message as to the importance that Philippine does place on tourism and the related subjects. Thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you, sir. My dear friend, Minister Wanda, and I like to call you just Wanda, just to break through the formalities. Thank you so much. Your energy is overwhelming. Your hospitality has been wonderful. You and your team have done a great thing, a great job in welcoming all of us. You can see the energy in this room. You can see the smiles. You can see the feelings of comfort. Thank you so much. It's been great to get to know you. In the short period of time that you have assumed your responsibility, you've done a great job under very challenging circumstances. Thank you so much, Minister. <clears throat> Mr. Leola, what can I say? I wish I could emulate your language skills. However, I must admit, I am always impressed with the energy that stems from South Africa. The African energy is here with you, and you have definitely get us started off on the right tone. Thank you so much for your thoughts. Thank you for what you have shared with us this morning. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, dear ministers, and I wish I could name you one by one, but we do have a very tight schedule and we have to have lunch at two o'clock, so I can't name you all one by one very good friends that are here today. I thank your presence here, representative from the tourism, the environment, and the statistics. And your presence here symbolizes the commitment that we all have to this wonderful human activity called travel and tourism. Ladies and gentlemen, Charles Dickens once said, we live the best of times, we live the worst of times. We definitely live times of natural disasters and health pandemics, times of economic crisis, times of terror threats and wars. And by God, we have seen much of those. This part of the world has been also experiencing much of that. Times of persistent inequality, times of menace of climate change, and much, much more. All what you need to do is listen to the news every morning, and you probably would feel that the world is falling apart. But despite of these complex interlinking challenges, despite of isolationist acts against the freedom of travel and movement, and against many other freedoms, I want to suggest very boldly that we do, like Charles Dickens says, live in the best of times. It's a beautiful world, ladies and gentlemen. Just landing last night by the airplane here in Manila, Looking around, many thoughts came to my mind. How beautiful, energetic this country is and the people of this country. Waking up in the morning and seeing the people going to work. I had to wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning because of the difference in time between here and Europe. I was thinking in my mind, this is a blessed place. People are up and working. They're up and working when the rest of the world is still sleeping. This is a very special country, this is a very special place. I want to suggest that we definitely live the best of times. First, we are indeed more connected, more informed, and therefore we care more about each other. At the tip of our fingers, if we reach out to our mobiles that we cannot be separated from, you're receiving news every morning, every minute, every spot, as it happens. This may disturb you, but just think about it. It gets you more involved. We know more about each other. We care more about each other. We're a better international global community. In the past, much has happened. We never heard about it. We didn't care about it. Caring is important. We're more compassionate, more understanding, and therefore we're more one global community. Second thing. Because billions of people traveling the world today belong to a group of believers. We are a tribe called the tribe of travelers, believing in the beauty of this world, the beauty and strength of our diversity, the beauty of our diversity, our right as human beings to enjoy this beauty and this diversity. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to suggest that tourism has become today a human right, just as all other rights. My right to housing, my right to education, my right to health, 
it's my right to travel, my right to enjoy the world, my right to do business, my right to get educated, my right to see things as God has given them to us. It's our right to enjoy life. But thirdly, because we would like to believe today that the transformative force that travel and tourism is embodied in is a cornerstone in making this world a better place, and it is. Travel and tourism today can break down stereotypes and misconceptions, bring people together. All what it takes is for us to come here to see all the myths that are being spread about this part of the world. We are here, ladies and gentlemen. We are here to tell the world, come to Manila, come to the Philippines, make no mistake about it. Anybody that tries to return or present any other versions of this story should come and see it in our eyes. We are here. We're here to send a very clear and strong message to the world. Come to the Philippines. We don't want to say it's safe, because it is. We're not in the habit of repeating what is obvious. Just come and see us, meeting here in hundreds, and sending the message to the world. The Philippines is a wonderful place to be in. Come here and feel good. When you never... You never have feelings of hate, resentment, or any kind of negative feelings to people that you have visited. Tourism and travel breaks all the stereotypes and creates a completely new way of feeling and thinking. You can never have negative feelings to people that you have shared food with, shared their music, shared their stories, and shared their dreams. But in addition to all of this, tourism is a wonderful human activity providing one out of 10 jobs all over the world. Every job in tourism creates 1.4 jobs other than the value stream. It's a powerful and a very effective socio-economic transformative force. Tourism generates jobs for local communities, jobs where people live. You don't have to move to get your job. And it's a non-transferable job. It's a job that's connected to the place and to the people. It keeps people from migrating for work a challenge that we have to face in today's world. Tourism also brings much needed resources that go into protecting and restoring our monuments and our natural areas worldwide. I always like to remember that whenever you visit a place that has been historically important, just think the resources that are needed to protect this place could not have ever been utilized or come up with without the power that tourism brings into them. Last but not least, tourism builds peace and understanding and breaks down walls, builds bridges, and makes us better people. Just look at the examples of many countries here in Asia. Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos. How wonderful they have become after so many challenging years. Croatia, Colombia. All of the countries of the world that have experienced difficulties have come back and shown their best. The real beauty comes out. My dear friends, all of these important contributions and more build contributions to more sustainable world. Yet, alongside them, we should never forget that many challenges we are still facing. We have to step up tourism's contribution to sustainability in many ways, sustainability at large. For our sector to be relevant, it must be relevant to other sectors, to other aspects of life. We must move forward for a truly, truly green economy where growth and the environment are decoupled from each other. We cannot afford anymore to consume our natural capital. We have to make sure that we enrich it. Two, we have to fight climate change throughout the entire tourism value chain. We must not submit to the current political trends of trying to disassociate ourselves from this real fact it's affecting our lives and the future of our children and grandchildren. We must promote accessibility for all. Tourism cannot deny people that do not have the ability to move around from the pleasure of enjoying this world. Accessibility and tourism for all is a must. Four, we must engage local communities, ensure the benefits of the sector reach them, and prevent negative income impact on social fabrics. We cannot afford anymore to have children, women, and vulnerable sectors of our society being exploited. We have to protect the weak. Our industry is a force for good. It cannot be associated with any negative stories of that kind. We also have to make sure that whatever is spent in the country stays in the country, prevent leakages, 
make sure that the benefits stay here and are spread equally and very fairly amongst people. But to do all this, we have to measure our impact so we can properly manage them. It has been correctly said that we cannot measure. If we cannot measure, we cannot manage. We have to measure accurately and regularly. We need to measure our impact if we have any hope of reducing carbon emission. We have to know exactly what we're doing. Improve our heritage sites and tourism attractions and manage them the right way. We need to measure the impact of the numbers and the people and who they are on the site. Getting the right infrastructure and carrying the right capacity are decisions that cannot be made without the right data. We have to curb the negative impact on society that we must accept our sector to have. If we don't do this together, we can ensure we cannot ensure that tourism is a force for good and indeed a tool for a better place and a better world. My dear friends, in 1980, Manila hosted the FOMES meeting that came up with the Manila Declaration 37 years ago. Today is another milestone. Manila is leading the way today, and this important meeting can be a true milestone for the development of our sector. A landmark moment if we're all committed to a new framework to measure sustainable tourism, a framework supported by the United Nations system, as you have just heard. We're part of the UN family, we're part of the local community. A framework for meaningful and feasible indicators of making tourism a real agent for change, a real contributor to the sustainable development goals a roadmap for 2030. We have had several conferences leading to a breakthrough in tourism in statistics. Nice, Bali, and now crowning it in Manila. It is truly crowning secretary. In this International Year of Sustainable Tourism, this very important year that was declared by the United Nations General Assembly as a year for sustainable tourism for development, is an opportunity for us to showcase the importance and the ability of our sector to move this world and make it a better world. As a matter of fact, in 2015, the United Nations General Assembly accomplished three very important milestones. One, in September 2015, we approved the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. 193 countries together came to represent the international will in approving the roadmap for 2030. In December of 2015, we also came up with the Paris Agreement, a very important milestone. And thirdly, we dedicated 2017 as the International Year for Sustainable Tourism. It is a unique opportunity for all of us to come together to promote the contributions of travel as a grand 21st century human activity to achieve the universal sustainable development goals, all 17 of them. One final thought, my dear friends, in my third visit to your beautiful country, Philippines is a place where you feel good when you're here. We don't go to places that you don't respect. We don't go to places where you don't feel good about it. You have to respect the people, the society, the environment, the culture, the system. When we're here, we feel good about being here because we respect the place. If you respect the place, this respect transforms itself to you. You dig into the reserve of self-respect that needs to be uncovered in your body. The delicious cuisine, the tranquil seaport restaurants, the spectacular creatures, both on sea and on land. All 7,041 islands are welcoming us here. When I think of the Philippines, I think of the bottom of our earth, the soul of our existence, coming up and pushing itself up to the surface of the sea. These rocks that found their way to surface and show the beauty of our inner soul, inner earth. And then they cover themselves with a green carpet, with a green blanket. It's a beautiful thing to see how this landscape has formed itself throughout history and throughout time. We're here to discover the inner soul of ourselves, where sunset and heartbreakingly beautiful scenes are dominant, where people greet you warmly with smiles. There's nothing more beautiful than the smile of a Filipino. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the best place about the Philippine, th thing about the Philippines is the Filipinos. You're the wonderful asset of this country. Yes. Be proud of it. 
rise up and say to the world, we are Filipinos, because the world is lucky to have you. You haven't lived, you haven't experienced the Philippine, you haven't finished your journey of life. You cannot go about your journey of life if you don't visit this beautiful country once in a lifetime at least. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. And in the beautiful, beautiful language, Maramim Salamat. <laughs> I'd like to share with you a one-minute video on how to respect places that you visit. Our motto for the International Year of Sustainable Tourism has been travel, enjoy, respect. Respect the Philippines, it deserves you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you very much, His Excellency Rifai. Before we continue with our program, we have a special video from the UN.